Yeah. Within the course, you cover every aspect of preparing and delivering a sermon. So let's start at the beginning. What does sermon prep look like for you? And what are some of the helpful tips and some ditches to watch out for? Yeah, well, I, I've been preaching for over 50 years. And, and there's an evolution that takes place um, in preparing a sermon, you know, from one season of my life to the next season to the next season. So I, I'm further on down the track. And I can tell you how I do it now, but it's not necessarily how I did it when I was a younger man, uh, just starting. But, you know, right now I start with a blank piece of paper and a fountain pen. Uh, I don't use a computer. I'm very hands on. And I take the passage that I'm going to be preaching and I go down the left hand margin of a piece of paper and I literally write out every word in that passage line by line by line. Sometimes there'll be two or three words on a line if it's like a prepositional phrase, something like that. And I look them up in the original language as, as I'm going through this passage and I'm looking up the meanings of words in the original language. And then I'm trying to explain or interpret what is being said uh, in this passage. And that requires that you know the laws of hermeneutics. And what is the authorial intent of this passage of scripture? And I'm writing out uh, in the middle of the page next to these words that I've looked up, that I've written down, looked at the meaning, really just uh, uh, an explanation of what this means. What was the intent of this? And as I'm going, I'm also making application and I'm writing that out in the in the right-hand margin, uh, how I would show the relevance of what is being said um, from this passage. And as I'm progressing, occasionally I'll draw a horizontal line to show the division. I, I think structure and divisions and sermon headings are vitally important for almost every preacher, unless you're just extraordinarily gifted. And, and so I'm putting together uh, a first pass at an outline. And I'm writing that out in the left-hand margin as well as I go. And um, as I go through this, once I'm finished, I'll then open study Bibles and commentaries. Um, what did I miss? Um, what did I misinterpret? Um, what do I need to add? Uh, so I want to do my homework first, my spade work. I want to walk the land uh, of this passage and then bring in outside help so that I can see um, how I can strengthen what, what I have pulled out of this passage. And then I will, I will scribble out, and this is in essence almost like a rough draft. I will scribble out an, uh, an introduction and there are certain things that make for a strong introduction. And then I'll write out the conclusion. And so I'll just staple it all together and then proceed to write what I would call a manuscript, uh, which is, for me, what I would take into the pulpit. It's probably about 70% of what I'll say in the pulpit. Um, maybe 80%, I'll be adding 20 to 30% in the heat of the moment and drawing upon, you know, over 50 years of study in the Bible. And um, there, are, there will be flashes of insight that will come while you're in the pulpit. So you never want a manuscript that's 100% of everything you're going to say. Uh, you've got to have uh, some elbow room, if you will, while you're preaching. Um, and so, but I'll write out my manuscript. I always start with Roman numeral one and move consecutively through the passage. Then I will write the introduction. Then I will write the conclusion. Um, and as you write the, your manuscript, you want to write it not like a term paper or a theological journal article. You want to write it like uh, you can hear yourself preaching it. You want a conversational tone to it. This doesn't need to be dense and highly technical. Um, this, this needs to have some 
energy and some vibrancy to it. Uh, C.S. Lewis said, great writers do not write with their eyes. They write with their ears. Uh, they can hear themselves delivering this message. And so as I'm writing the, the manuscript, it's, it, it's to be set up almost like a trampoline effect that it will propel me forward to say with a preacher's tone and, and a preacher's fire uh, what needs to be said as I come to this part of the, of the passage of Scripture. So that's just as brief of a flyover, uh, David, that I can give you. I mean, I teach an entire class in seminary, um, what I just walked you through. So, you know, that would be like 40 class hours. Uh, I just gave you in about 40 seconds. So there's so much more, obviously, that can be said, but that's kind of the succinct version of it. 